for um, getting up early this morning. Hopefully by being here, you're gonna get alpha that no one here is gonna have. So hopefully you'll walk away with um, some really exciting investing opportunities. So today's talk is something I've been talking about since I first came to CFC in, I believe it was 2017, um, this idea about the relationship between energy, computation, and cryptocurrency. And I think we're now at the point, finally, where these are mul uh, three different multi-trillion dollar investment themes, and I finally built the firm that I've always wanted to build to invest in them, because the time has come. So let's talk about it. Um, Compute rules capital markets. I always love this chart. I started working in uh, my professional career in 2009. I worked in the oil and gas industry. And in 2010, um, ExxonMobil, where I worked, was one of the largest companies in the world with a $400 billion market cap. Today, that doesn't even crack the top 20. So the world has changed dramatically. And we have no better example of this than this little chip maker named NVIDIA. NVIDIA started the year not even in the top 10, and today it is the largest stock by market capitalization in public equity markets. That's remarkable. And it has been fueled entirely by the emergence of a very active, very robust, and very capital-intensive data center economy. So we're going to talk about that a bit today, but if we look, there have been some other upsets in the top 10. Broadcom a components manufacturer for data centers recently entered the top 10. TSMC, which is a fab, a fabricator of um, chips, entered the top 10. And then all of the other players, the MAG7, have been on this list for quite some time. And then, of course, Saudi Aramco, largest energy producer in the world, is on the list as well. So the world has changed dramatically. So I want to start with a fun little exercise. We love talking at this conference about how crypto is one of the best performing asset classes of all time, but I want to do a little exercise to put it into context. So what you see on this chart is the dark blue line at the bottom is the S&P 500 in terms of performance last year in 2024. The S&P 500 did pretty well, delivered about 30% return. There are three other assets I put on this chart, Bitcoin, Vistra, which is an independent power producer, and NVIDIA, which we all know, chip maker. So which line do we think is which asset? So who thinks that the best performing asset last year was Bitcoin? OK. Who thinks the best performing asset was NVIDIA stock? OK. And who thinks the best performing asset was Vistra, this independent power producer? OK. So we had a pretty even mix, like a third, a third, a third. Are you ready to see the results? OK. Narrative violation. The best performing public equity last year was Vistra. Vistra is an IPP, an independent power producer. It delivered a 262% return last year. NVIDIA delivered about 180%. And Bitcoin, believe it or not, only 108%. So this is what's really exciting to me. We love talking about crypto in isolation, but crypto is part of a larger value chain that revolves around something I get very excited about, these fundamentals. So economic systems, as we know, are comprised of three things, energy, matter, and information. And the global economy that we're all a part of and investing in is really an open system that transforms energy and matter, resources and goods, into services and products, but all of it is derived from energy and matter. We love talking about first principles. Here are my first principles. Without energy and matter, you can't do anything. That is really our primary objective, is how do we get better at finding funding and optimizing the way we use energy and matter. We live in a thermodynamic world. This is just the reality, right? There's this intrinsic relationship in everything we do, whether it's crypto, AI, you name the tech sector. All of these sectors are entirely dependent on our ability to produce energy at low cost and to deliver it to a data center where compute is happening. So I want to talk a little bit today about some of the radical shifts that are taking place in these three categories. This isn't a physics lecture, by the way. Don't be afraid. I'm very bad at physics, by the way. But I just want to make sure that we all put into context how important the next decade is going to be when it comes to compute and energy. And the frontier I'm focused on with my new firm is finding funding and building markets for energy and compute. And I think these markets are going to be built on chain. 
So it's very exciting because these three themes are going to come together in a beautiful way. All right, so let's talk about Bitcoin as a blueprint. I see Fred from Marathon up here. He knows exactly what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so Bitcoin is thermoeconomic money. We take a bunch of energy. We use that energy to do computation, and out comes this thing called Bitcoin, right? That's how proof of work works. Over the last decade, Bitcoin has built new capital markets and really um, sophisticated financial engineering instruments through the introduction of the perpetual swap that has built this massive market outside of the traditional financial market structure. But it's very much been tied to both compute and energy. So I'm going to say something really controversial. The AI boom that we see today would never have reached the magnitude it's at without Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining capitalized hundreds of billions of dollars of data center build out. Today, the Bitcoin miners in the US own a really valuable asset. They own really low cost power purchasing agreements. They are fueled by lowest cost electrification. They've driven persistent demand for hardware in the form of these ASICs, and they've pioneered a really cool business model for data centers behind the meter co-location. So they've co-located with assets that are not grid connected to be able to monetize energy resources that normally would be very difficult to monetize. And now every AI data center you see is running the playbook that was pioneered by Bitcoin miners. That's pretty profound. We sometimes like to think Bitcoin exists in an entirely different world outside of the rest of the world. It doesn't. These things are intrinsically related to one another. And Bitcoin is consensus, right? Bitcoin used to be controversial. Here are the top 12 asset managers in the United States of America. Almost every single one is doing something in the Bitcoin space today, whether it's BlackRock running $50 billion of Bitcoin in the IBIT ETF, all the way down to the Invesco's, the PIMCO's of the world. So it's pretty profound how in the last year, Bitcoin has gone from being controversial, and it was actually at this very conference, I think, that the Bitcoin ETF was launched. So I remember being at the bar with some of you the night that that, that news came out. Um, but it's been pretty profound to see. And the financialization of Bitcoin is really just the first step. The financialization of Bitcoin is, you know, we have spot trading derivatives, ETFs, public company proxies, uh, public company proxies, and over 22% of adults in the US own Bitcoin now. I think Bitcoin as an asset is becoming more mature, but what's happening is there's a new market that's opening up. The agentic economy, in my view, will be the biggest market for crypto. Robots, AI agents, they can't open a bank account. Um, they don't have an identity that they can KYC, but they can have a wallet on chain. And if I were a machine, would I want dollars or would I want thermoeconomic money that's backed by energy and compute? Probably the latter. And so the agentic economy is going to need cryptocurrency. So I just want to quickly highlight the energy to compute value chain. So what specifically am I talking about here? The compute value chain is complex. There's a lot of different players in it. But if you figure out all of the companies that operate in this value chain and you allocate capital to, to them, um, very likely your portfolio will outperform this year. OK, so you develop a facility. You install the infrastructure. This is where your CapEx comes in. You deploy hardware. You put in your chips. You have a bunch of software you install that makes that hardware easy to run. Then you manage your data, and then you manage your energy and your operations. Okay, This is a complex value chain. There's CapEx involved. There's OpEx involved. And there's material growth. Right After nearly a decade of no demand growth in the US grid, we're seeing exponential demand growth. We're expected to see over 100% demand growth in the next five years on the US grid alone. So energy. Goodbye. Um, and CapEx requires OpEx. This, to me, is the most exciting part. Today, NVIDIA has been the primary beneficiary of the AI data center boom, right? Look at what the stock has done in the last four years. The one paradigm we don't talk about enough is as time goes on, hardware spending goes down and software spending goes up. Because once you install all of these chips, you build all of these data centers, how do you manage them and how do you optimize your margins? You've just spent a ton of money on chips. So in every new hardware paradigm, we will see a wave of software innovation that follows this massive capital deployment. And there's $100 billion of credit that's gone into data centers and is growing. Blackstone, actually, if anyone's tracking what they're doing, they've announced that their intention with their $1.1 trillion of credit 
is to be the largest financer of the energy and compute economy. Huge narrative. So energy, compute, and crypto, how do they fit together? I'm going to give you an investment framework. You can buy this in your portfolio through public equities, through crypto. You can express it however you like. Here are the four opportunities I think will be the biggest over the next decade. Number one, protocols. Number two, commodities and capital markets. Compute is going to be the biggest commodity asset class, bigger than oil. Three, orchestration and optimization. And four, aggregation and marketplaces. So I'm going to run through each of these. I will publish my slides online, copy them, use them as you wish. I want you all to profit from this thesis. All right, so number one, protocols. Over the last decade, most crypto protocols, if we look at sort of this OSI architecture of how modern networks get constructed, most innovation has happened at the networking layer or above. We're starting to see really exciting new innovations in the crypto space where people are actually building and constructing new physical networks, we're calling them N1s, that are bringing together physical infrastructure in new ways to support the blockchain ecosystem. Why do we not have a crypto dedicated internet? Why do we not have private ISPs that cater to the blockchain economy? This is now happening in the form of these new protocols called N1s. So very excited about the opportunity to invest in and finance the development of these new N1 layers for the blockchain economy. And it's going to be compute, connectivity, and storage primarily that drive this innovation. Uh, commodification, right? If we look at what's happened to compute over the last decade, in the early days of compute, you would run bare metal, right? You would house your data on-prem. Then we saw the emergence of cloud. Cloud brought down your CapEx. Your OpEx would scale with use, but you had a high degree of lock-in that made you mercy to the whims of the hyperscaler you were procuring from. And now we have this new model emerging where the renders, the Akashes, the Exos of the world are allowing CapEx owners, people who own chips and run data centers, to improve utilization and margins by contributing their excess compute capacity to those protocols. And you have this new model of incentive people to do that with a token. So I think the commodification of compute is one such theme, but you can imagine this across a variety of different opportunities, including energy, storage, um, and connectivity. Next category, optimization and orchestration. So one of the things that's really interesting is the data center infrastructure management market is going to see a lot of growth, right? Right now, we're in the CapEx phase where people are deploying a ton of capital to build data centers. But as these facilities scale up, operators are going to have to figure out how to manage them more efficiently. And all of those credit funds I talked about that deployed hundreds of billions of dollars of credit into funding data centers, they're going to need to better manage and monitor what's happening within these data centers so that they can capitalize these assets effectively. So we're really excited about this category. I think this is one where we'll see IPOs and the creation of a whole new software category that hasn't existed yet. It's like B2B SaaS, but on steroids, and it's for data centers exclusively. And then lastly, aggregation and marketplaces. This is a place where I'm actually really excited for energy. So if we look at, for example, here, the um, US energy grid, there are a ton of distributed energy resources that basically are um, assets like batteries, smart meters, and other types of energy saving devices. But it's very difficult to gather data about them today, and you can't control them in any sort of aggregated way. So there's a very cool company called Daylight that is building a platform to aggregate these resources and they're actually using a AI to optimize how um, households are using energy. And with a stable coin, you can actually pay people in real time to reduce their energy usage. We've also invested in a few companies that are doing this on the data center side. So you can actually build a marketplace to actively pay data centers to curtail demand. And that's something, by the way, that Bitcoin miners have been doing for quite some time. So those are the four key categories. I ran through them quickly. As I said, these slides will be available online. So, I want to leave you with just one thought. If we look at what's happened over the last 15 years and how quickly capital markets have shifted from fo focusing on energy, industrials, and banking to software, software pardon, semis, and energy, I think if we look at the next decade, the opportunities for growth are going to be in these three categories, energy, 
compute, and crypto. There's a variety of different ways to express that thesis through very liquid instruments, liquid crypto, uh, public equities, particularly small cap equities. But there is also a lot of opportunities on the venture and credit side. Looking forward to sharing more with you over the next few months. And if you'd like to learn more, feel free to reach out. Um, very easy to find on the internet. Thank you so much.